All right, so we're going to continue on. I'm going to select cell A8. So I'll just select 9. That looks better anyways. Okay, so we're going to query out. Uh, now let's query out the contract item. And here we're going to do... Uh, we already know what the contract number is. Um, so we want to see the contract item number, uh, its description, the original uh, contract total, and then so we'll go ahead uh, Add a condition. Again, uh, basically it's the contract based on a parameter. Now this one I'm in the query wizard. You'll notice that there's another one as well, and it's database field. And qu quickly, just to go over what this means is um, you can compare one database field to another. So I could say where the original contract is uh, greater than or equal to the revised contract, if that's a field in here. Um, that would be like a database field comparison. But we're going to do a parameter on our workbook, and that one being the contract ID. And then I'm going to click OK. Um, I'll just leave it for the defaults on for here, and I'm going to click Finish. Okay, so notice um, we'll be adding, this is just coming from the contract item derived table. We'll be adding some columns um, to get some other information. So we're going to type those in because we'll be using them for functions. So it's the approved changes, the revised. Contract, build to date, paid to date. Okay. And so we're going to use the, uh, looks like the exercise takes us to the same table, but uh, I'm going to use. So we can use the lookup function. Yeah. Oh, uh, contract item derived table. In this case, we know our key, our keys. Uh, contract is in contract ID, and the contract item is in cell A10. Um, I'm going to click Next, and here's where we can get the approved changes, uh, the revised, the total build, or build to date. Uh, and then paid to date, which I believe is cash receipts. Yeah, cash receipts. And then I'm going to click finish. So I just went across for us. Um, again, I'm going to highlight these and fill these down. All right, and then do an insert here because we're going to put in current billing. Uh, 
and we're going to use the sum wizard. So the sum wizard, again, it's almost like any other uh, of the functions. We're going to sum up. Um, we're going to sum up the transaction totals. So we we'll go to contract transactions. See if I can find them here. There. And we're going to sum up. Now this here is a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. And uh, with the sum wizard, when it goes to to select the fields that we're going to sum. You, it's only going to show you fields that can be summed technically in the database. Now, obviously, um, a sequence number, it's just that's what it is, is a sequence number. Um, basically, it's a number starting with one and goes how many ever records for that, for that batch or whatever. Those don't typically get summed. But it is a number, so it's going to include it. In this case, though, we want to sum the amount. And so it'll list there. What it, what you don't see is all of the other fields that can't be summed, like dates, um, uh, fields like contract ID, and so forth. Next, uh, and then I'm going to add a condition. And notice these are all of the fields in the in the in this table. I'm going to select contract, and it's a cell. Re uh, we're going to put it equals to a cell reference uh, again, and to the contract ID. So we're adding that condition. I'm going to add another one. Now, remember when I said I add them without defining the and or or, it's going to add it for me. And so I'm going to do it again for the contract item equals to cell reference uh, A10. Click OK. And now I'm going to add a condition based on the draw number. I'm going to say it's equal to cell reference our last draw. And then I'm going to add a condition for the transaction type. Let's see if I find it really quick. Let's see amount type owner. There it is, transaction type. I'm going to do it's equal to, and this time I'm going to do a literal value. And I'm going to drop this down. Now what this does, um, and it, depending on how big your table is, it's going to give me a distinct list of all the values that currently exist in Sage under the trans for that field. So for transaction type, I have uh, looks like five different transaction types that are currently in Sage on this table, this field: build, cash receipt, invoice amount, retainage build, retainage held. Now, if you do not see your value in there, that means the value just hasn't simply put, been put into Sage. You can you can type in your literal value or select it. Um, in this case, it's going to be equal to build. So it's in the list. I'm just going to select it. Then I'm going to click OK. Those are all of the conditions I want to apply. I'm going to click Finish. And so the sum wizard with all it took all the rows that where my conditions met were, were equal to true, took the amount and gave us an aggregate amount. So this row could have had five or six um, records or rows uh, where the, um, you know, it was that contract ID, contract item number one with that current draw, that long number there, uh, and build. So there could have been five records and added all the, all of those amounts together, and now it's displaying it here. That's what the sum, sum function does. And the, and the formula can get pretty long up here, as you see. And, and in the advanced class, we'll get to more of a, um, how to uh, optimize these. Okay, and then I'm going to do uh, 
I'm going to do a previously build. I can't spell. Um, uh, so it's this one is just a formula. So it's going to be um, H minus G, build the date minus, we're just backing into another one. This is just previously build amount. And then, we're going to have nine again. Oop. Click I. And now we're going to insert another formula, percent build. Uh, and that one, um, I'm going to use the if error. So basically, this one's just H divided by E. Um, otherwise, zero if there's an error. Uh, we'll make it a percentage really quick. Even though it's your choice if you want to format as you go along or after you're completely done. Um, I formatted that because it just it looks a little bit better as we're designing the report. Okay. We'll do a receivable uh, balance. And that one is equal to build to date minus J fill down okay I already showed you the trick with the uh, insert but the exercise is calling for it so um, remember if we wanted to blank column to maybe separate these into little sections you can insert a column and then put equals or double quote double quote so we'll do that here to break up our sections. And then we'll do it uh, two more places as well. I'll just do it in K as well. And just fill down. All right, and then the last thing we do is we're going to add in our contract totals. So we'll just say, um, and again, um, I'm just going to enter the subtotal function again. And I know we did, we're not going to do it on percent. You can copy the percent actually one down. Let's we'll do that. Okay, save. Um, okay, and that's, and then basically you can go back again. And I'm not, I'm not going to format this, um, but you just basically go back and do your formatting of their report. 